today, Mr. Sudhir Sagavadi, the Managing Director and CEO of Mofridge, Consumer Products Limited, will be speaking on the topic, the new marketing playbook, and we are pleased to have with him with us today. Of course, uh, keeping in touch, Mr. Sagavadi is going to be joining us digitally. Thank you so much for your valuable time. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a huge, huge round of applause. So we'd love to hear from you. Thank you for joining us. Hi, thanks so much. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can. Okay. I'm, I'm really sorry for not being able to join uh, live. I think I have a recorded video uh, which will play, but I just want to say that uh, since for many years I've been an avid leader of the Pitch Madison Report. For the first time actually I'm hearing uh, Sam speak about it and I really enjoyed last half an hour listening to it and it's such an exciting time for our industry and for media both in terms of the kind of rapid growth and the transformation of the channel mix that uh, it's really a privilege uh, to be here today. Uh, I, I, I guess I'll have to hand over to my video uh, for, for my keynote address. Thanks so much. Thank you, thank you so much. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Sameer joining us right now live, thank you for that. Uh, well, this is such a perfect amalgamation, he's uh, you know, joining us virtually, yet he saw uh, Mr. Balsara present, so this is going to be a beautiful amalgamation. And now, I'm going to be queuing in for the video to be played for this session, over the tech team. Good afternoon to all of you. I must firstly, if you see, apologize for not being there in person to speak to you. It's one of the problems of the hybrid world. Sam first invited me for a real meeting. Uh, I said yes. I was invited for another one which I said no to. Then this became virtual and that became virtual, so I said yes to both of them. The other one which was outstation became real first, so I said yes to that and said I'd do it virtually. And now both of them are real, so I'm now uh, you know, set to uh, speak to you virtually. I do hope uh, I can make up and I do hope that in the question and answer, we can try and be as engaging as the virtual world allows. Sam asked me to speak about the new marketing playbook. It's something that I'm usually very reticent to talk about because I'm also usually very wrong. Most of my predictions regarding marketing have proven to be completely wrong. But I thought I'd still take another chance at it and speak to you about three things which I think will exemplify the new marketing playbook. I have a group called Visium with a lot of my ex-marketing team, a lot of brand managers whom I work with, marketing managers whom I work with, and we exchange ideas and articles on marketing with each other, and generally talk about the future of marketing on that group. A few days ago, I received an article there called Expiring versus Permanent Skills, and it was a blog on the page of a private equity or an investment fund called the Collaborative Fund. And the article was written by Morgan Hauser. I think if you can, do have a look at it. It speaks about, in business, what skills will be permanent and what skills will be expiring. He makes a very really interesting case about how in the 19th century, the most important skill for military cadets graduating from West Point in the US was drawing and painting. Not because drawing and painting opens your mind, but because Soldiers fighting in Africa or Latin America needed to draw maps on the fly. With technology, it's obviously not really a skill needed now. And that's why drawing and painting are no longer skills we require of soldiers. So the article got me thinking about what will remain unchanged in marketing and what will change. One of the points Hauser makes is one of the skills that will remain unchanged is to get to the point quickly. So let me get to the point quickly. I'm going to talk about three things, one of which I'm reasonably certain won't change, one of which I think won't change but I could be terribly wrong about it, and one thing that I think will change. What I think won't change and absolutely won't change are the fundamentals of marketing. And the fundamentals of marketing are insight, positioning, proposition, and the big idea. These haven't changed for the last 150 years, and there's no reason for it to change in the future. There are plenty of examples of great brands. In fact, all great brands, if one studies it, that have lasted for a long period of time, have basically remained unchanged on these four. Take the example of GCPL's iconic brand, Synthop. 
I'll have a look at these two advertisements. One with Vinod Khanna in the 1980s. Playing uh, the first recorded gramophone of a classical song. 
A classical concert now and even 120 years ago are typically two and a half, three hours. But the gramophone allowed only two and a half or three minutes. And Gaurav Jan played an entire rag in three minutes, signing it off with a great branded statement saying, I am Gaurav Jan again. So while Gaurav Jan brilliantly improvised the new medium, brilliantly branded it, he did fundamentally change the nature of classical music. It was still the same rags and the same cards. And in that sense, I do feel that digital will require some adaptation and some improvisation. It will not be a long period of digital medium. It will fundamentally go to a six second YouTube bumper or a Facebook static. That's my bet. Uh, and, and these will replace you know, the 30 second TV or the 60cc print ad. But it will still be one or two uh, medium. I mean, a few years ago when the digital world was still in its infancy, and I'm talking about seven, eight years ago, we were all very excited. And we tried once a campaign, we had 60 different ads on Facebook to 60 different cohorts. And surprise, surprise, it was the same ad that run all cohorts. And that, that makes the point that even though digitalization allows for mass customization, I'm not quite sure that consumers really want or need it. I think one area of marketing that will definitely, definitely change is the way we organize ourselves in marketing. I think we will move from people making judgments to people being aided to make judgments using algorithms. A brand manager can run 10 times a media plan that his counterpart 20 years could do with the help of relatively simple algorithms. Even pre-COVID, I would spend two days or three days every two weeks traveling to remote parts of the country meeting consumers, and I still do that, but I don't do it once in two weeks, I do it once in a month. And actually every week I spend three or four hours on Friday afternoon meeting consumers in remote parts of the country digitally. So that saves a lot of airlines, it saves a lot of organization, a lot of agency time, a lot of overheads for us. I remember earlier on when we had a proof of a print advertisement to be released in Times of India the next day, early morning, 9 o'clock, somebody from the agency would come with the printed proofs. I look at it, make some comments, send it back with her. She'd go to the office, make some correction. Perhaps once more I'd send it back. Then she'd send it. I'd sign it, give it to the assistant brand manager, who'd go and take legal and technical clearance. Then he would call uh, the agency at 5. Then the agency would do its own back end work and send the final positives to uh, Times of India at 11 or 12 o'clock in the night, right? This was the process. Imagine how much of that process is now done. I think the point that I'm making is that marketing is saddled with a whole set of overheads which are gradually disappearing, but I feel like the COVID wave will ensure that these overheads disappear very, very quickly. That's a good thing because what we will be willing to pay in marketing are a few skills. Creativity, for example. I think the role of big idea is significantly more important or at least as important in the past. And I think there will be competition for great creative people uh, who don't come with a lot of building space and a lot of people as overheads with it. There are three skills I feel that are crucial in marketing of the future, a new marketing playbook. The first is clarity. You know, some kind of strategic clarity that you must have on what should be done. Two is problem solving. People with clarity will set the problem and set the agenda. Algorithms, and people who are comfortable with algorithms and making algorithmic decisions will take it. And third is creative people who have the ability to drive and generate big ideas. I think if you have one of these three skills, you're in the game. If you have two, you're, you're really top of the box. But if you have none of these, I think companies, agencies, people, all of us need to reskill ourselves uh, with these three skills. Not that these three skills were not important in the past. I think they were always important. But they came with a lot of overhead camouflage. And that overhead camouflage, the digital revolution is going to break through. And the three skills that were already, these are timeless skills. I mean, clarity, analytical ability, and uh, creativity are timeless skills, but you're just not going to need the paraphernalia around these skills. I guess my bet on the new marketing playbook is 95% of it isn't going to change. But the 5% that's going to change is all of us. The skills that we need, the skills that are relevant, 
that we had to sharpen. And that's what's going to change. And one of the common skills that Hauser talks about in his, uh, in his lovely blog is the willingness to adapt to views that you wish were permanent, but you have to accept that they run their course. And I think a lot of the extra skills in marketing that were there, we have to understand that they're no longer required. And the three core skills of marketing, clarity, analytical ability, and creativity, are all at the glass. And I guess that's my big bet on what will change in the new marketing table. Thank you very much. And I wish you have a great event. Thank you so much.